Welcome boys and girls, we might as well do all four games. I know in uh, the first one I said, you know what, we might just be choosing some of the games, but as I keep on analyzing game one and two, the games are too good. So I'm going to rewatch it with you guys. The whole thing, even the drafts. Here, game number three. Now Echo are in the first pick, they banned the Estes and Diggy instantly, knowing that, hey, Blacklist might think to pick up the Estes and Diggy now. They leave out the carry, but it's fine, because guess what? They can pick up the Fredrin first pick, and this is something that, again, I, I just did not did not like from Blacklist. I expected Kaja and carry, right? They went for the Forza, which is, again, very easy to counter, because Echo did it in game one. They got the Lapu, plus they got the Kaja that can technically counter the carry. So, two prior heroes go for the Lolita in the end, because they have to pick up, you know? I don't think it's ideal here um, to go for the Lolita, honestly, because there's not much to really, like, do as a Lolita up against these three. But because the SS and Diggy have been banned out, it really leaves Venus in a very, like, um, tough spot. So they just pick it up. I think that's what they were going for here. Now the Barats gets banned out. Now they're just really targeting. Wise, man. The Kadida comes out, too. They are respecting that. So Akai and the Barats... What did Wise play here? I forgot, actually, dude. Um, yeah, I forgot completely. I even forgot what Edward went for. Oh, yeah, they went for Baksha. I think I, I said something here. I forgot what, but I had a hero in mind for, for, for Wise here, I think. Valentina in the jungle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Um, it's a bit tough because, again, you're up against a Frederick. We can clear really fast. You want to go for mobility here, like the Baksha. But, yeah. Still, it's so crazy that he still picks the Brody here with um with the Lolita. But he knows that, again, the way he plays, doesn't really care about the shield. Again, Lolita is a counter to Brody. If you play Brody the normal way. If you play Brody like Benny... It's not a counter because he's an assassin. He comes in in the last second. You don't have your shield up for that. You're not going to hold your shield off till the very last moment, right? No, definitely not. Oh, this is the Gushin game. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. And the Yuzong, uh, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't do really well in, against Lapu in lane. Here, this is insane because I thought when I was casting, I thought that, hey, in the mid lane, this is the, this is the time for Haji and Venus to pop off, right? Because Sanji's going to have a tough time on the Gushin. You outrange him. You outclear him. Carl TZ in the jungle versus Wise as well. Wise is going to be able to clear those um, the creeps a bit faster. So I really thought in terms of mid control, it was all going to be Blacklist International, right? Let's see. But dude... I think this is where Echo was just like, you know what? We're 2 0 up. If we're if we want to try something crazy, this is it, right? This is I think this was the just the game breaker for them. Because when they won on these picks, I think Blacklist just got tilted, right? So they're already tilted because of the 2 0. And now they, they if they lose to a Gushin, right? It's some more ornamental. And in, in this matchup, it's also still Benny who wins it. So, so far, the pattern is give Benny the winning matchup and he just performs, right? Honestly, there's just a lot of winning matchups here for, for Echo, even in the uh, XP lane, right? Sanford does a bit better against the Yuzong. You can actually look at the way he's playing the wave too, forcing Wise to actually rotate down below. But Sanford, look at this. Wise can't do anything there. And the roamers are just in the mid lane together. They're just, yeah, clearing. Sanford goes clear faster. That was just a good... <laughs> wow. Now that was, you know... Wise was so on point in game one. Game two, so on point. But now you can see, I think the tilt is real here in game three. 
That's something that Wise would not have missed. Uh, okay, yeah, we just cracked. Guys, this is the reason, by the way, that I didn't really want to, you know, analyze game number three and four because they were really stomp, stompy, and uh, it's just Echo outclassing Blacklist. Game one and two, there's still a lot of to, a lot to analyze, a lot to read. This one, Yaoi flickering like that, no, no setup. It's just they just got the better position, and it's Yaoi doing Yaoi things, dude. <laughs> and here too, I think. I think. Um, okay, well, Wise gets out here. Doesn't have divine judgment yet. Yeah, I think in this game, Echo just styled on Blacklist. So we're just here to enjoy the show. Again, steel leg plates, guys. Steel leg plates. Best, especially as a gold laner if you're up against a marksman. Steel leg plates, dude. Get so much value out of that item. You win. You you will win every trade. Especially if your enemy uh, marksman doesn't go for this. You, you, you just pop off, dude. Come on, dude. I keep on saying dude, by the way. I blame G the Ico for this. And Trex. All the NA boys and Moba Zane because he started it technically with on his streams. And then they go for picks again. Venus gets caught, doesn't die. But again, with that, they're going to be able to actually get some more pressure down, right? Venus has to recall. They put some more pressure on the map by just not being seen. We're just going to skip over here because both teams are just fighting for pressure. Sanford wins in the XP lane, clearing it first. Mid lane a bit slower by Sanji, but Sanford and Carl TZ, they can bait out the Black Dragon form, etc. Carl TZ buys so much time there before he falls. And Sanji and Sanford, San San Duo just cleans up. This is so good, by the way. Yaoi dodged away from that skill shot. And then Sanford... I remember this. Oh my god. Again, right? There's not much to analyze there. It was just a, it was a fight. The setups, they weren't playing for the turtle. They were playing for the fight. And, and Echo won. <laughs> That's like, it was just really good mechanics. But, you know, something that you can't really fully analyze. Echo. Echo game three. This is, this is crap. This is bullshit. <laughs> oh, this is the Sanford play. All right, we got to go full volume for this one. Again, do I really need to analyze that? There's <laughs> what am I supposed to analyze, man? Even the observers. Not even the observers can believe it. <laughs> okay, let's try. Let's try. No, nothing. He just... Just does, he, he clears out the bottom side. He clears out bottom lane. No, he doesn't even. Well, he does. He does. He clears that. Clears it out, and he rotates up top. And they look for a team fight. And Blacklist were just not ready for that. It, that's it. There's again. They just they they use the winning lane. Okay, that's the only thing. Okay. So if you guys want to, if you guys are playing ranked competitively, if you want to go pro, always try to utilize the winning lane, right? Because that's what's gonna carry you through. Uh, when you have a losing lane. Try not to care that much about it, about the losing lane, unless you can, right? Mostly you're going to be putting your resources towards the winning lane because that's the the way you can actually f hold out until the mid game. And uh, again, what are you supposed to say about this fight, man? Like, again, they're just fighting, dude. Venus tries to open up the map. He sees Carl. This is just, okay, again, I think Blacklist are just tilted at this point, right? Because it's very uncharacteristic for V to do that. And then two members... Disappear from out of nowhere, as Mirko says in the, in, in the thing. It's a good shutdown by Oheb. And then they fight again. They, at this point, they already have the lead, right? So there's, there's not really much that Blacklist can do. They can force these kind of fights, but... Again, because Echo is so ahead, it's a 2v5, 4, well, 2v4, yeah. Like, Benny, Benny gets caught here. I, I swear to God, it just doesn't make sense because they're able to win this out anyways. They, they don't have Carl, they don't have Benny, and Edward just comes in because of the lead that they have. And then they find a kill onto Wise too. Oh no, Wise dies, but... Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's... 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 Yeah, no. Like... Blacklist finally got a, a, an equal trade, or a better trade, but then... Sanford's just a, a menace, dude. Like... Oh my god. I was so... By the way, by the way, if you, if you hear my cast, I was still so speechless by this play that I... 
I literally was speechless. I did not know what I was saying here. And then, and then he, Sanji does this, and I was just like, oh, brain fart. But yeah, 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 yeah. We don't need to listen to that, right? But I, I covered it up pretty well. You guys didn't notice it. I didn't know. I didn't see anyone notice that. So, hey. And then Yaoi. Oh my god, man. What are you supposed to do with your blacklist? You're so far behind when Yaoi can just ult you. But the Divine Judgment is, a, is a, an ultimate with a pretty long cooldown. He can just use it like that. And there's nothing you can do. They can pick up turrets like this, clear out waves, and they're just going back to just fundamentals. This is the moment where this is just like, it's, it's over, right? They're tilted, right? Because Benny doesn't die here. Dude. Oh my god, this is such a crazy game. The House of Highlights, the House of Highlights dude. Wow. What, the, what are you supposed to do? You, you guys tell me. You guys tell me now. What are you supposed to do? What? The? No, it, no, Blacklist were just... They were, they were, this was not Blacklist. Game 3? This was not like... Blacklist were in shambles here in game three. Oh my god. What the heck? Right? It's unfair. And then they siege again with the Brody. You can see the, you, you can hear the gasp. You can hear the the LaFell gasp. Look at it. On the back line, Wise is gonna be targeted down. <gasps> we were having a blast, dude. Uh, like uh, everybody, uh, me, Leo, and LaFell. It was so it's such a fun game to cast. Not a fun game for for Blacklist fans and for Blacklist, but it was a fun game to cast. Oh my god. Now Brody can just free hit on the turrets, and if Blacklist want to fight, hey, let's fight! Alright? Bates out, Numenon Blast, good feathered airstrike, Yaoi doesn't die, Torn Apart Memory gets cancelled out, finally it's a kill, right? But again, if even with these trades going in favor of Blacklist, it just kept, it felt like there was no way to come back in this game. There is a way, 100% there was a way. Is it a comeback? It's, it's not 100% guaranteed, but... At the time when I was casting too, it just really felt like Echo was, you know, even when Echo was losing, they were winning, you know? They lose members when it's just, they lose members when it's okay to lose members. That's it, right? That's the proper way to say it. Because when they lose members, there are no neutral objectives to take. There's nothing for Blacklist to really punish. There's no, nothing that Blacklist can do to really capitalize on that death. Meanwhile, when Blacklist dies or a Blacklist member dies, it's always like, yeah, oh, this is, this is not, the, is this a moment? I think this is, this is the, the, oh my god, I, yeah, yeah, this is it, this is it. Benny flickers, and then this is the, Benny! There you go, yeah. And then Sanford. We just gotta, we just gotta enjoy this. Guys, this is why I didn't want to ask. This is not, what the? F what was that? Like what? This is the defending. These you're playing up against the defending world champions. You're going up against the MPLPH champions. You're going up against Blacklist International, who went all the way to the grand finals through upper brackets, and you're doing this. It does. Oh my God! It. Black Echo are making like they are making it look so easy. Like what? What are we watching? I agree, Mirko. <laughs> and then we go to. Uh, we're just gonna. We're just gonna. We're just gonna watch the fourth game, right? At, at this point, Estes. And yeah, fun fact, guys. So Echo 
if they get second pick, I think they were at a uh, 70% win rate at second pick or 65% win rate. So second pick is where Echo finds comfort. And, uh, you know, the past two games, they were actually first pick. So, yeah. And now they go Fredrin Glue. They finally leave the Yeev open. The Diggy's open too. This is crazy, guys, because finally you see, hey, you know, there's a, there's a glimmer of hope here because, hey, these are the comfort picks. It's Haji on the Yeev. It's Wise on the Barats. It's Venus on the Diggy. Then they pick up the Hilda. Up against the Diggy. I think what makes the difference here, or what can make the difference here, is Echo banning out the gold laners, right? They've already gotten the one one and the carry out. This is their opportunity. They have the first pick in the second phase. This is the time to ban out the gold lane, but instead. Yeah, that's what I thought, but they didn't go for the gold lane. I thought they were just going to try to shut Oheb down again, right? Uh, but they actually shut Edward down, and I, I think that's the better decision to make. They went for one ban to Edward and one ban to Oheb, not completely going for Oheb. Then they banned the Harith. And here, I forgot what they picked. Lunox. It's a good flex, flex pick. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's everything here can be bursted down by the Lunox. It's, it's pretty nasty. It's pretty nasty, man. Yeah, I agree. And that's exactly what happened. LaFell called it, right? The moment they win the jungle fight with this comp, Hilda. And I, at this point, I really forgot. I, I forgot what Sanji, he went for Xavier. And this is a composition. Yeah. Oh my God. I forgot. But yeah, I remember. I, when, I, when I saw the Xavier, I was, um, uh, during cast, I instantly like, I, I looked at LaFell, I think, and I was like, I, because I, I thought, the Xavier is just such a good pick here, right? It's uh, one of the best heroes to go up against a Diggy um, if you are doing well, if you already have like a, a lot of winning lanes and if you have so, a lot of pressure because the Xavier is one of the best at triggering or forcing the time journey out, right? You put out a Mystic Field, people get immobilized, gets caught, and then that's a Diggy, that's a diggy forced to use time journey. And even here... They get Benny a winning matchup. Lunox versus Beatrix is better for Lunox. Sanji too. This is something that I... When, while LaFell was talking, I was like, I was looking at it, and Sanji's insane because he doesn't care. He was just basic attacking Haji. He knows that in the 1v1, he... he does not win level one against a Yeev. But because Yaoi is going to pop in, he doesn't care. He actually wins out on the train in the end and he actually regens back up. So what the heck? Again, they're so in sync. That, that's, the, that's the word. So look at how Sanji's so ahead now, right? Because he made that decision to keep on fighting and baiting the Yeev out because Yaoi came in and the range now. Once you're level two, Sanji finally gets like some more range to play with and Yaoi just does this. And Benny takes the wave slow again. Right? He's trying his best to like, um, kind of like deny as much gold and XP as possible. Every single time. It's every single time Benny plays. No kill pressure. I agree, Mirko. There's no kill pressure here from Blacklist. But it's not their fault because Echo drafted really well. They forced the no-kill pressure game to happen from Blacklist International, right? And then they picked up the heroes that have kill pressure for themselves. So, again, it's, it's not like Blacklist did anything wrong, <laughs> honestly. It, it feels just like Echo were one step ahead here, which is really frustrating, right? Because usually you make mistakes and you're like, okay, we can improve from these. But if when you lose this way... When your opponents are just this much better, it, it's it's so disheartening, man. I and here too, wise. I don't know if yeah, he tried to go for for more, but Sanford was just not having it. Sanji comes in, takes the kill, and then Sanford survives this. Oh. 
put Swift there for Sanford. He gets out. Venus trying to find that kill off. Reverse time, bringing it back. But Sanford's still alive. Has a slam, slam, and the fast pass, and Haji gets picked off. Sanford it's is still alive. Hey, LaFell, remember what LaFell said early on? Once they win the jungle fight, it's over. The time journey comes in. That's the jungle fight. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. No marksman. They siege this well. Echo. Echo M4. Different beasts. Oh my god. What are you supposed to do, dude? What are you supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> On a Lunox. <laughs> we were all silent. We just didn't know. Is this pause? We were all just like, what? 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 That's a mage. That's a, what I said. That's yeah. It's a Lunox. Yeah. Boom. Time journey pop. God damn. And then Haji gets chunked. That Mystic Field did half of his HP. So now... And then Carl Teasy, oh, so perfect, dude. They bait out that fight up top so that Carl Teasy can get free. Turtle. It, the forced errors that Echo were creating in game four were absolutely disgusting. And... Ah, what the heck? It's not even an assist for Oheb. Holy shiz. Oh my god, I'm trying my best not to swear, dudes, but... And then Benny cuts the wave here. It, it, it's it's. I, I think LaFell just called it right. Game four, whoever wins the jungle fight. When when you get oh my god, when you, when the Barats gets poked down that much, and you're two levels below of um, a Fredrin. Again, one whoever wins wants the jungle fight. Once they win a jungle fight, it's over. LaFell, you called it. LaFell, the prophet. Oh my god. I'm just going to skip through this, right? Because, again, the, the, the low points in this game, there's not much. Echo weren't doing anything too crazy. They were just clearing, clearing, and clearing. Why is low? There's no damage to kill Carl, and, and Carl just dives, take tanks to turret, top lane too. Edward tries to look for us. Uh, he, he does get it. He does get a trade. He gets out too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he does, but... Yeah. Mm, man. And then here, Sanford just basically solo killing Oheb, forcing time journey, flickering. And and this was just... No. I was, I was getting really like... Cause like if they if they got out of that if they actually won that I I just don't know what to say anymore. Oh my god! Oh like Blacklist are trying their best to find a trade, but it's always going to Echo's favor. Allow me to hypothesize. LaFell, what's gonna happen if Blacklist fights Echo here, mano in mano every single time? If they try to trade, what happens? Will that eventually lead to a comeback or will that be punished by Echo? Because again, 3K, that's about a main item for a core. Not yet, because Edward is the one dealing, dealing the most amount. Can't shred that because right now he only has the blade of despair. It's not enough. You can fight. No one can burst Sanford. Oh my god. These dawning lights keep on coming in too. 
My dudes. It's kind of crazy, my dudes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. my god, what a game. It, the, oh my god, it, it just feels so... Like, Blacklist weren't able to do anything. Echo just went back to the fundamentals. Again, they, they cleared mid-wave. They forced Blacklist. Like, here, okay? Finally, something to analyze. Here. They already have a 4.2k gold lead. Plus, they scale really well to the late game, right? Plus, in the mid-game, they all get their power spikes because there's this ahead. So, what they're doing here, Lord Dance. They're going for it. No mini waves, so Echo are trying to bait Blacklist to come through. Blacklist rotate. Yaoi wins in a trade. 1v1 against the XP lane. Edwards forced to back off. And guess what? Again, they don't care about the Lord. They just go back for a fight, and then Edward tries to clear in mid lane. And Echo just go back to mid lane. Sanji can clear it. Top lane is slow pushing. Beatrix finds a trade, but Echo just move back and forth. They force a fight. They force a trade that Blacklist cannot take. And then they just play with the waves to pick up the Lord. Here you can see Edward just trying his best to like clear the wave, trying his best to look for a trade. But again, it's just... Man... Yep. Again, there's so many things to worry about. If you're Blacklist International, not just with HP, with Lord marching down at the top side, it is going to be acting as a distraction. Sanji's going to be taken to a quarter of his HP. Lord taken down as Blacklist International are able to micromanage the waves for now. Mid lane to be pushing in. Benny with a KO. What is that damage? Oh my goodness, that damage on the field. Yeah. <laughs> Same reaction. Still. <laughs> It, it was amazing. It's an amazing defense considering they're that behind, right? Oh, oh my god, these items. These Lunox items in 11 minutes? What the heck? And then, again, they, they constantly are baiting the time journey, right? Oh my god. And, and oh, dude, what the what? Sanji, what the heck, man? Oh my, oh my god. Happy feet. I just, I just had to, I just had to say wow there, dude. Wow. I just had to appreciate Sanji's movement on the Xavier. Yeah, and again, it's free because they're still pushing the top lane. They already have glue to manage the bottom lane. And even in the 4v5, even if they go 3v5 at this point, with this amount of gold, like the amount of gold that they have, and how much Blackest are behind. Edward gets out. What the heck? That's one dawning light. And then the time journey gets baited, and that, that's just done. No time journey there. Dig Diggy non factor in this team fight now. Good, good punish there. Blacklist are so good at, at like you know the, the fact that they can still defend despite being this much like this far behind. It's crazy, but then they try to go for purple and then Wise gets caught I, right here. No, when did they get caught? I remember them getting caught. Not there, I guess. But yeah, then it's just farming again, setting up again. If you're this far ahead as uh, if you're Echo, there's no real reason to go for any fights, right? Just wait for the Lord. And they get the Lord. Oh, no, they don't. They Yaoi gets caught here, but they use that much for Yaoi, right? So... Oh, 
A lot of resources spent. Sanford now jumping in. Donning light, taking Venus to have a half HP. Why is it going to opening? Edward going to be caught in the Mystic Field once again as he jumps out with Iron. Oh my god. Venus taken low by Benny and Sanford, who's now on Wise. Bringing him back. Immobilizing and Sanford jumps in again. Oh. He finds it. Venus forced to run away. Haji standing his ground. But Carl Teasy jumps in. The flicker out to safety as Wise is even caught by the Mystic Field. Echo, look at him march down. Benny with damage. Appraiser We're going to go full volume for this one, boys. Yeah, we getting out. Okay, not yet. I thought it was the ending moment. My bad. <laughs> but, right? They just keep on playing around Lord and then fighting. It's just, again, once it gets here, it's just the fundamentals. There's nothing to analyze. It's it's just them outclassing Blacklist. In a way that is unanalyzable. Because, of, oh, okay, the, the initial jungle fights, just like LaFell said. The dawning light outranging the real world inflation. Sanford finds a double. Echo, they haven't just broken the code. They have shattered it. 4-0 for the Orcas. The age of the Orcas is now. Echo are your M4 world champions. Waning the game, getting the checkmates, setting everything up. Right now. Okay, first episode was an analysis. This is just a reaction because there was nothing. There were a few moments where I could say a few words, but for the most part, I was just reacting, right? And I think you guys can agree that, again, game three and four was just echo stomping, right? Hope you guys enjoyed the video, even though there's not much to analyze here uh, in the second episode of game three and four. Um... Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, there's going to be more. MPL PH Season 11 later on. MPL ID Season 11. Uh, I'm gonna, mainly going to be casting, so probably not going to be analyzing Season 11 games but I, uh, for ID, but I, I think I will be ca um, in analyzing PH games. So, you know, keep on a lookout for that. I think that's about it. We're ha we have some vlogs. And by the way, if you guys want to catch me, I will be... Um, I will be casting the MDL Play-Ins Grand Finals tomorrow. So if you guys want to check it out, go and check it out. MDL Play-Ins. Unfortunately, there's only an Indonesian broadcast. Um, so if you guys are English speaking, you can't really you know, understand. But hopefully you still tune in. There's a lot of talented teams here in the MDL Play-Ins. And uh, I really hope we get to see top-tier performances from them. Other than that, again, leave a comment if I missed anything. If you guys, just tell me what your thoughts. Just tell me your thoughts about this, the whole thing. Um, oh my god, it's just, what, whatever, dude, oh my god, it's so, such a crazy game, but leave a like, comment, uh, subscribe as well, if you're new to the channel, 70% of my viewers aren't subscribed, so please do subscribe, um, if, if you want to, if you don't want, it's fine, just, just click on my videos, thank you, um, I'll see you guys next time, <laughs> peace out, bros.